On this video, I'm gonna share everything I ate and did in Mexico on an epic family trip. The amount of delicious food is unthinkable. The places that we visit and the experiences that we had is just what I like to call it a 10 out of 10 will highly recommend. And everything starts off with an all-inclusive hotel called Escaret Arte, located in Riviera Maya. Not only are there hundreds of things to do in this hotel, it also includes park entrances so that you can enjoy unlimited amount of entertainment and fun with the whole family. Honestly, it's like Disney World, but better because all the food is included. And I'm talking about food, everybody. I'm not joking. And every time we were hungry, this was our go-to. It is called the Mercado de San Juan. They have everything you can think of. Let me remind you that everything you're seeing is just for breakfast. One of the things that I got addicted to was this. It's called tlacoyo. ¿Cómo se hace tacoyo? El tacoyo es una tortilla así. Ah, primero hace la tortilla y después lo haces así. But the best part, the best part, you get to put whatever toppings you want and make it your own. I got addicted to a sauce that they made out of roasted tomatoes. And of course you have to put the Mexican crema, everybody. I'm being conservative here and I'm telling you, I ate 20 a day. My wife liked the tamale quite a bit, which there were many different options. Maybe one of the best things about this restaurant is that it is available for you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the food completely changes from one time frame to another. But when you are in Mexico, my friend, you gotta have some tacos, real tacos. Needless to say that the amount of variations between meats and sauces is absolutely endless. I've never eaten so many tacos in a few day spans as I have eaten there. The best part of the taco was that the tortilla was always freshly made for you. There's a huge difference when you buy it from the store and somebody just makes it in front of you, not only because the experience is wonderful, but the taste. Maybe my biggest problem with this restaurant is that the possibilities were endless and the amount of desserts that they have in there, yeah, that was, that was bad. I love the ice cream there, freshly made every single day. My favorite one was the vegan ice cream, everybody. You saw this vegan? <laughs> it's just ice. That's funny. That's pretty funny. Vegan is just ice. Mexican people is just like me. They want to play a, a joke on the vegans, everybody. If you're a vegan, you just get ice, nothing else. But enough about the Mercado because the very next day we wanted to see one of the seven wonders of the world. It is called Chichen Itza. The only bad part is that it is a two and a half hour drive from the hotel. And I was told by my guy that it was gonna be extremely crowded if we do what everyone else does. My guide said we should go to the cenote first. I was like, what the hell is a cenote, man? I've never even heard of that in my life. This is what it is. It is an underground cave system that occurs in Mexico. They have several of them in Mexico, but this one is just breathtaking. I wanted to swim and take a dip like everyone else was doing, but unfortunately, I didn't have enough time. If you go there, give yourself some time to experience it. They don't only have a cenote there, because they also have a traditional Mexican-style buffet, including local fruits and veggies, taquitos, two types of spaghettis, of course, they gotta have rice and beans, and a lot more traditional Mexican dishes. And of course, no, 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 you think I forgot about this one? They got the meats, everybody, and quite a bit of it. This place looked fantastic, but it was very touristy, and my guide wanted us to experience something authentic, and I was like, Yes, sign me up. We left there and we wanted to visit Chichen Itza because it was the perfect time. And the first thing you see as soon as you walk in is the amount of vendors they have right before you see the pyramids. Everything you can think of, they have. But walking through it is an experience, but what is impressive is Chichen Itza. And when you see it for the first time, it's literally breathtaking. This place has so much history and you can feel it, everybody. But there's another thing you can feel and it is the heat. This is a nice, wonderful, beautiful place. But I'll tell you one thing, everybody. It is hot. It is beyond hot. Yep, I was 
dying, everybody, melting like there was no tomorrow. But the next stop made it all better. It is called Maison del Marquez. It is actually a hotel, but they are more known for their restaurant downstairs. And here's where I was ready to have a Mexican feast. First up, the appetizers. They do a table side guacamole for you, everybody, which is absolutely fantastic. This is a freshly made guacamole that it was absolutely delicious. But there's one thing that is a lot better than the guacamole over there, and it is the Coca-Cola, everybody. If you ever had a Mexican Coke, you know what I'm talking about. And if you think it tastes the same, no, it doesn't. And it's not only because it's a glass bottle, it is the actual taste. A lot of people say that it's the sugar. Honestly, I don't care what it is. The Coke in Mexico is just better. <laughs> We also ordered queso fundido with chorizo, which is a melty cheese, and they put a little bit of sausage on the top. That was quite delicious. But the next one was absolutely insane. It is sauteed mushrooms served on a taro of tostada. They give you some lime to squeeze it on top, and they call it a day. When you take your first bite, it's one of those things that you cannot just take one bite, everybody. It is delicious. Yeah. Is, it, is it good? It's good. I cannot believe that I was a fan, a big fan of the vegetarian dish. But next up, mole enchilada. Now, if you take a look at this one here, visually, mole doesn't look that appetizing, everybody. And the reason it's this color and it's a little sus, I understand, it's because it has chocolate. But it has so many other spices that it makes an extremely flavorful dish. When you combine it with tortilla and meat, boy, you are about to go to town. It is awesome and delicious. But I understand a lot of people eat with their eyes first and for some people, you either love it or hate it. And for me, big thumbs up. My family does not enjoy mole. It's not for them. So they had something different. They order flauta, steak and fries, and cochinita pibil. Now this is a very traditional dish from Mexico. They slow roast it in banana leaf underground for hours, and the result is off the chain. But there's one item, if I go to any restaurant and I see it on the menu, I will order. I'm talking about picanha, everybody. So yes, I did order, but when it came, I was not impressed. What kind of bullshit is this. First of all, instead of giving a nice, beautiful, delicious steak, which is the way I recommend it, they slice this whole thing in half. I've never seen anything like it. There was also no crust. And of course, I order medium rare. But look at it. It's not. Oh, it's a no-go. I love Mexico, but when it comes to picanha, that was one of the worst picanhas I ever had in my life. But they made it up with desserts. Everyone ordered a different type of dessert, but the best one was this one. It is a mousse cake. I don't know how they make it, but I can tell you one thing. I believe it's a mix of coconut and chocolate. And when you take a bite, it's not extremely sweet, and it is phenomenal. This restaurant overall was amazing, and it was also reasonably priced. Just remember, stay away from the picanha. Oh! Next up, we went around town so that the food can settle down because that was much to experience. I just love the street vendors. They are everywhere. Every type of snacks that you can think of, they have it, especially on this stand. But this ice cream, I don't know about this trip, everybody. I'm addicted to ice cream. Surprisingly, it's not very sweet, but it's extremely flavorful. But after walking around through the streets of Mexico, it was time to head back to the hotel because we had reservations in the hotel to a meat paradise. This restaurant inside of Escaret Arte is called Arenar. It's located right under the main infinity pool. You gotta go down some sketchy steps and as soon as you arrive, you see a beautifully decorated restaurant. Now as appetizer, normally whenever you go to a restaurant, they just give you bread, right? That's a normal thing that you should have. Not here, this is what arrived. Some beautiful tortilla with chicharrones, beans, and bacon. The chicharrones was on a whole nother level. Super crunchy, but also not hard. That's the thing with chicharroni. Whenever you have it, you want to make sure that it's not going to break your teeth because if it breaks your teeth, something went wrong on the cooking process. They also give you the drink of the night, which is perfect to wash it down with the appetizer. What the <laughs> <laughs> that was a
And for the appetizers, the first thing that I ordered was the empanada. This one was actually made out of spinach. And if you never had a spinach empanada, they're quite delicious. Following that, I had to have croquetas. Croquetas are basically a bechamel sauce that it's made and usually combines with ham. Once the bechamel sauce is done, they let it cool down and form into shapes, bread it, and deep fry it. This one was good, but what I had next was way better. Caesar salad. I cannot believe I'm saying that. A freaking Caesar salad. Did you know that a Caesar salad was actually invented in Mexico? I didn't know. To be specific, in Tijuana, Mexico. You can tell immediately on this one that they do not use any bottle sauce. Forget every type of Caesar salad you ever had in your life. This one is different. I don't know how to explain it. The only thing that I could tell is that they had a heavy hand with the anchovy because the amount of umami inside of that salad was incredible. I could eat a hundred of these, everybody. But then it was time for the main course and I was super excited because I know the meat was coming. And then the first thing that they put in front of me is A1 steak sauce. Seriously, at that point, I was worried. I was having thoughts about the picanha I had previously. And that picanha was not great. And you put a steak one sauce in front of me? Wow. The options they had to order on the menu was either a New York strip, a ribeye, or a tomahawk steak. I went big because everything is inclusive, everybody. You're not paying a dime for it. So I said, give me the tomahawk. Shortly after the A1 sauce, check out what arrived. I really want to know your opinion on the comments. Please let me know. My wife ordered the New York strip and by the looks of it, uh, it says it all. And she also ordered medium rare. My wife was like, this is not a Guga steak. When I sliced my steak, you can clearly see the results. It's still slightly pink, but to my surprise, a better crust was actually on the opposite side. I have no idea why they wouldn't present the steak to you with a better crust. If you have a steak that is great, it is not as good as if you have a nice developed crust. A crust is a must on the steak. That comes first. Number two, your preferred doneness, which mine is medium rare. Even if you like medium and you get a gray steak, it's never gonna be as good as a steak that is properly seared. But overall, the taste of the steak was okay. The bar is it good? Yeah. Very good. And if I'm being completely honest, a lot better than the picanha that I had previously. It also comes with two side dishes and I chose the mashed potato and the mac and cheese. The mashed potato came like this though. It's literally puree. The mac and cheese on the other hand though was good. Overall, this was a good restaurant and me and my family had a blast. But no, we didn't order any dessert. And that's because we went right back to the Mercado and we had to have some ice cream. And that everybody was delicious. It's one of the things that I missed the most. Overall, this was an incredible trip. If you're thinking about going to Cancun, Mexico, I highly recommend staying in this hotel. And if you're there and give yourself some extra days to go to the cenote, you will not regret it. Of course, Chichen Itza is fantastic. But if there's one thing that you must have in Mexico is food. And the food there is just phenomenal. The people are incredible. And Mexico, I love you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.